Check out that stopping power. That's right. I just upgraded the brakes in this Jeep Cherokee. In the front, I already had the WJ brakes, but in the rear, I've just upgraded to ZJ disc brakes from the drum brakes that came factory. So this is the ZJ disc brake swap for the eight and a quarter axle found in the Jeep Cherokee models. It's really quite a worthwhile swap, really improves the braking power. Let's get right into it. We of course want to start out with the vehicle jacked up, supported on jack stands. Uh, for the eight and a quarter, we've got a C-clip axle, so we need to remove that diff cover and pull the C-clips. In my case, if you're familiar with my Jeep, you know that I have the torque locker in there, so it's gonna be a little bit of a pain getting the C-clips out of that. You basically need to uninstall the torque locker temporarily. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, we're getting down to removing the drums. Uh, of course, to get the backing plate off, we have to remove the axle shaft. So uh, my rear brakes have completely failed. That could be why I've been hearing grinding noises, having no parking brake. There's literally no, no braking material left on those shoes at all. I'm gonna pull out this axle shaft and remove uh, the four bolts that hold the backing plate on, uh, remove the nut for the brake line, and this entire drum and backing plate assembly will come off. Um, oh, e-brake cable as well, of course. So currently my front wheels are blocked, e-brake is off, and this is ready to, uh, well, I gotta take the diff apart like I mentioned, and then this is ready to come apart. So the only thing that's holding the e-brake to this backing plate now is this super annoying clip. I'm sure there's a better tool for getting that off. I don't have it. Here's a third prong on the back side here that's going to be, of course, the most difficult one. Looks like you can get two of them. And you go for the third. Another one pops back. Ah. Not gonna lie, taking the torque locker out was a big pain in the butt. They have a crescent wrench like one of these that fits it. Excellent. Uh, mine, however, does not fit that tightly. And I don't wanna round it off, so I'm just gonna use vice grips. And excellent, it's spinning freely from the brake line separately, so it's not seized together. Now I could probably use the crescent wrench here. Yeah. So I'll blast these four nuts off of here, and this is ready to remove. And there goes the backing plate. This is the ZJ caliper bracket and backing plate assembly with the parking brake already installed. I was told going into this that these were gonna to need to be uh, ground out a little bit, just a die grinder probably in there. And uh, that's a really close fit. However, I measured this with a caliper and I don't have a real precise, you know, machinist caliper, but uh, this works better than tape measure for measuring diameters of things and I'm seeing like 71 maybe 71 and a half millimeters on that and this one it's more like 74 millimeters but that's awfully large there, I guess this tapers back a little bit. It's actually a lot of wiggle room in there. So that is bigger than it needs to be, which is good. 
I just need to get mine to fit. So I'm going to be replacing this axle seal anyway. So if you're not replacing that axle seal, however, it's a good time to do it, especially if you have a locker that you had to mess with to get axle shafts out. Just go ahead. These are like less than $15 a piece. Just replace them. Even if they're fairly good or they weren't leaking, they always like to leak after you've messed with them. I'm just going to mock up the caliper and figure out where the brake line is going to land. So I just want to finger tighten these bolts just a little bit. I'll have to cut this and kind of angle that towards the brake line. I'm going to put our flare on this. Don't forget to put the nut on there as well. So I'm using these really cool little adapters, very simple concept. And this just mounts onto the e-brake tab here. Normally there's kind of a box shaped cable end that goes on here and you can replace the entire cable back to the uh, equalizer if you want to. But these little uh, adapter things are a couple bucks less than that. You don't have to mess with your cables. You know it's a factory Jeep uh, cable if uh, you ever have to replace one. This requires a fair bit of room here for this to actually work. So it's hitting my brake line there. I ended up cutting the bracket tab off of this thing entirely and just welding to the opposite side, which never had any brackets. So it's pretty much as close to the U-bolt as it can be without touching the leaf spring plate up here. Kind of tight clearance between those two parts using this setup. And I'm just gonna bolt these down all together to make sure it sits nice and tight to the axle flange. And then I'm gonna add some red Loctite to these. I wanna see how, how much of that nut actually goes on to this uh, stud here. Well, before these were kind of flush, you know, the, the stud was flush to the end of the nut. Now there's a little thread showing. I'm um, really not worried about that engagement because these are a, a rather deep nut, but I'm going to do some uh, red Loctite on those just because there's really no need for me to ever take this off uh, that I can think of. So red Loctite it is. Axle isn't locked into that uh, C clip yet, so I don't know exactly where that wants to float. That seems good. These studs that I'm running in here are from a Dana 30 unit hub. So those are longer, and then one of them broke for some strange reason, and I had to replace it with a stock eight and a quarter lug again. So that's the comparison. Unintentional, but there it is.
So the shorter, heavier spring on the right is the ZJ disc brake proportioning valve spring. And the longer, lighter spring on the left is the disc brake spring. So I'm going to swap just that spring, and that goes into the nose of the proportioning valve. So that's sticking towards the front end of the Jeep when that's installed. And it's just a matter of pulling off this little piece, unscrew that, swap the spring, plug that back on there. Now, I don't have a real great way to record this, but this is all I'm doing is pulling this nut off and swapping out that spring. Yeah, that did not lose fluid as quickly as I expected at all. I thought that was going to come shooting out of there. Lost a little bit, a couple dribbles. And putting the other spring and that piece I just dropped back in there. I'm glad that's not flooding with fluid. Right, that ended up being pretty easy. As you saw, not a lot of fluid came out. Of course, don't forget to top off the brake fluid before doing anything. Do not press the pedal until you've put some fluid into your reservoir. You're going to be bleeding these so you can overfill it if uh, convenient for you because you're definitely going to lose fluid from whatever you put in here initially. Don't forget to adjust the e-brake before you take off. Uh, it is going to be the exact same adjustment as any drum brake. So there's our final install. So I've got the hose and the cable. That is with the e-brake on, so it doesn't uh, doesn't actually get that close to the hose. Those are never going to come in contact. That's not touching the leaf spring plate. Well, I am really pleased with this swap, just with how easy it was to do and with the improved braking power that I've gotten out of it. Even when I had my brake shoes in good condition and well adjusted, it just doesn't compare to the disc brakes. Nobody likes tearing apart drum brakes. Uh, the parking brake, speaking of drum brakes, also works really well. With that added adapter piece that I used, it gets great leverage, it holds really firmly, it works, uh, you know, if you need to hoon a little bit, it does work really well to lock up the rear tires. And uh, good news is you shouldn't be tearing that drum apart anytime soon because you're not uh, slowing down with it too much unless you're treating it like a rental car. But that's beside the point. The disc brake pads are what are gonna wear out on you quickest, and those are going to be really easy to replace from here. You know, if you guys follow along with the install that I did here, you'll see just how easy it is. You know, collect your parts or pull from, from a donor, and everything you need is found on a ZJ, except for those little adapter pieces. Go ahead and order up a set of those, and uh, this install will go super smooth, and you'll be really, really pleased with the results as I was. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Give us a thumbs up on this video if you could please, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.